the status of the new watchman. Watchman, as you have it in that title, is you as an individual, me. Watchman lady, watchman elder, elderly woman, watchman young person, watchman worker, watchman kitchen staff, watchman teacher. What's that, what's the face of that new watchman? What is the status? The new watchman person must be somebody who is growing strong in his spirit, growing in faith, growing in love. Listen, love for the Lord, love for the church. I am not only talking about just the physical church, but I'm talking about the brethren. And in love for the work of God. For that person, there is no inconvenience in his dictionary. If you call him up, listen to me, if you call him up at any time for any meeting, for any preparation, for anything, he does not frown. He does not have any inconvenience. He's growing in love for the work and then he's wanting to be a champion in what he's doing. If you refuse to grow, listen to me, Satan has spotted it. He has no need. Oh, my friends, I want to tell you that we are, we are attempting what, has, what Satan hates. I need to say it and any real apostle that is leading people will tell the people the truth. Forget about the people that are dancing and that are telling them some sweet, 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 sweet things. The people that you are telling sweet things have been overcome, overcome by the spirit of fashion. They have been overcome by immorality. They have, over, they have been overcome. And then you have succeeded in making their, their minds not to be not to be alive again that is nothing pricks them they have their consciences have gone dead that's what some pastors have met the people their consciences have gone dead so he can come out from boyfriend's house and then come to the church and then praise god and then sing and then speak in tongues and has no feeling yes and has no feeling real men and women they grow and how do you grow? You grow by practicing something. Are you there? You grow by practicing something. Did you hear about ministering to the Lord? It was instruction. Go and practice it. Did you hear about building yourself up? That is making yourself qualified? Go and practice it. Read the Bible. Meditate on the something. Pray the prayer. Generate faith. You meet an obstacle, try to tackle that obstacle with faith. And then if that obstacle is tackled with faith and that obstacle departs, another obstacle comes, the success you had in the previous one will boost your mind for the second one. Right or wrong? And... Uh, that one went away. Another trouble comes. You now have two incidents. And your mind is now being boosted. And you are saying, God is real. I will not give up. You, the thing that is coming, I will deal with you. You cannot deal with me. And you are growing in faith. Praise God. Because you are practicing something. You are practicing something. Prayer life 
is from this level, look at me, prayer life as you become a Christian, look at me, is at this level and is going, 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 and does not end. Oh, praise God. You know, some people, after they have had, and they were, they were gingered, and they were nourished, and they were impacted upon, some kindling of fire was done. And then they go out from here and use talk talk and remove everything and remain as they came. You go out from here and pick phone and talk things that are not connected. And those things that you have said will remove the things that you have had. Simple and short. But the appropriate thing is that you returned. And somebody wanted to tell you something, you, you spoke sparingly because there is something in your heart that you want to nourish, there is something that you want to, you, you want to grow, and then you fell on your knees and you are praying. The Spirit of God told me it is drawing from what has happened. You draw more into your life from what has happened. You finish preaching, as I finish, you get back home and then on your knees you fell. So you must practice. You must practice love. You must say to yourself, no, 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 no. My wife, no, cannot. God forbids. How can I hurt her? God forbids. God forbids. I like her. I like her. I like her in her absence. He went and took her dress. And then he put it on your chest. I like her. <laughs> Think I'm joking. The same thing you do to a husband. And as you are saying that, some animosity that wanted to, to perish will be sacked. <laughs> you are growing. But if you go to begin to, this woman cooks bad food all the time. Doesn't know I have ulcer. And then he likes pepper. Me, I know take pepper. He doesn't care. Come on. Keep this kind of woman, and then every now and again you are calling her this woman, this woman, this woman, it's no more. <laughs> After three months, that your mind will get into trouble. Whether you be man or woman, that's what's going to happen. And then you'll be managing to stay together. It is in practice that you grow grow in humility, grow in quietness of spirit. You know what? how you do that? Now, something wants to make you violent, makes you to, makes you to react. You say, stop. Tell your mind, I'm not going to react. Purposely, no. Don't do it. But the thing was too, too bad, really. And then you conquered. And then you didn't react. Ah, you just become very happy. And then on another occasion happens and you remember the previous occasion and you didn't react. Before you know it, the thing will be part and parcel of you. And you will just be somebody that is quiet in spirit. No anger. Finally, I want to tell you an area that we must, we must put on. Now close the area of Making sure that we don't offend one another anymore. Don't offend me. I don't offend you. You don't offend this person. You, and I will tell you how it works. And it is possible, completely possible. Let me ask you, what is that thing that a determined person even without prayer, a determined person determines to achieve that he cannot achieve. Somebody that is confident, that believes in himself, in his ability, and he is not a child of God, and is positive. What is that thing that he will not achieve? I don't think there is anything that he will not achieve. So, now, we can achieve this one 
That is, we don't create offenses. You know what? If this person A offends this person B, and this person B that has been offended is not seeing the offense, listen to me. The prayer of the person that offended this person is not going to work for it. It's not going to work. And this person that was offended cannot pray for this person. When he is making his prayer or her prayer in the private, the person he was offended is remembering. It's not, this woman don't suffer, don't suffer me. This man has tortured me. And why somebody in the body of Christ is saying, this man has tortured me. And you uh, that tortured him, that is remembering, is praying. Now his complaint is canceling your prayer. And the devil will see heaven here. That's how he accuses the brethren. That's the meaning. And the prayer will not pass. Look. Oh Lord God, heal me. Somebody is saying, look at this man has made my life miserable. And you are saying it. Oh Lord God, heal me. And Satan and the demon that know that the other person is saying, this man has made me miserable. Be saying this prayer will not pass this place. And that's the end. God works with principles. There are rules. He stops the prayer. And the prayer will not go. His accusation works. Because you have made somebody sad. And somebody is dying. And you are wanting to leave. And he will argue that you should not leave. Your prayer will not go. That is the reason it is dangerous to create offense in the church. And how, how do you avoid creating offenses? You must be conscious. I will take care of what I say, how I say it. You must be conscious of it. How I respond. How I use my mind. There are people eh, that they are in uncontrollable in the use of words. You open your mouth and you are using words. Words are flowing out. And you don't bother about the meaning of the words. And the words can be very hurtful. The words can constitute dagger. And you are using them. Please, from today, from today, learn not to use evil words so that you don't create offense to your husband, don't create offense to your brother, don't create offense to your wife, don't create offenses to the brethren, to the pastor. Because if you do, you can't make pastor offended for and then accuse him for what he didn't do. And if he cannot hold his mind, and, he's of his, and then he is disciplined, and he didn't do anything, and he knows that he didn't do anything, and then or the other brother knows that he didn't do anything, and then he went and, and roped him in, or the sister knows that he didn't do anything, or your child knows that this thing that you did, I don't merit this kind of treatment because of talk talk. Because you use your word anyhow. And the person is pining away. And you are praying prayers for God to answer. Satan will say, this prayer will not pass here. I tell you the truth. Don't create offense for anybody from today. Let's read the scriptures on offense. Stop being an offense to anybody. Matthew chapter 18. Weigh your words. Weigh your actions and your reactions. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, 
he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself, like a little child, the greatest in the kingdom. Verse 6, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones, offend there means cause to sin, cause the person to sin, be, uh, be an, a stumbling block, scandalize, that's what the offense there means. Whoso that shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it, is where it were better for him that a millstone were hung round his neck and he, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. In Romans chapter 16, Romans chapter 16 and uh, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause what? Divisions and what? Offenses. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Offenses. Something that you will do, something that you will say, and another person will become sorrowful and become become sad become become wounded wounded in the mind and the person will just begin to not to know what to do again don't allow your mouth to cause an offense to anybody. Osha, don't cause somebody offense by your insistence. Osha can cause offense and people will not come to church again. And then you are praying. You have stopped somebody from coming to church and you are praying to God. You have stopped your husband from coming to church because of your behavior and you are praying to God. You have stopped your wife from coming to church and you are praying to God. You have stopped your children from coming to church and you are praying to God. They are offended. They don't like the church because you have told them things that makes them, that make them not to like the church. And you are praying to God. Please, men and brethren, what you are hearing is the truth. Offense, offense will hinder you, will hinder the person that you have offended, and will hinder, will make the devil make a mince meat of all of you, all of those people. Those that cause offense and divisions, avoid them. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 32. Give none offense. Don't be a scandal. Don't injure the mind of anybody. Neither to the Jews, the religious people, that are not born again, nor to the Gentiles, the people outside are sinners and they are not children of God, nor the church, nor to the church of God, nor in the house of the Lord like this. Don't cause somebody offense that he should say, go away. Another person comes and say, go away. Go away, I have your member. Every now and again, he be misbehaves in this place. Don't tell me anything about this, your, your religion. These things we must observe, and then the face of the new watchman is the face of people that remain in these hundreds and in thousands 
and everybody is conscious of not causing any other person offense. Hallelujah. Are we okay? You like me, I like you, we pray, heaven comes down. Do the thing that will make me get delighted in you, and I'm rejoicing. And the pastor is rejoicing. See, there goes my children. Praise God. I said, it works. It works. Vow today, I want to wash my words. I want to wash my actions. I don't want to go beyond my... I don't want to make my superior to be unhappy. I don't want to make my husband to be angry with me. I want to... And if I make a mistake, I fall down on the ground. The same thing from husband to wife. And to the children. Oh my God. And to the children. And to colleagues in ministry. And to brothers in the same workforce we are in. Let us make ourselves in such a way that we like one another. And then we like one another. You will not be in lack. You will not be in lack. So, the, the brethren like you and they see that you are sick. Your house will be a place of a gathering. This person is coming. The other person is going. This person is going. The other person is coming. Because a friend is he. Praise God. This is the face of the new watchman. And let it begin with the leaders. Let it begin with the workers. Open your mouth and pray to God. Let charity begin at home. Let this thing begin to be practiced at home. Let's wash our words and our actions and reactions at home. Let friendship begin. Let friendship begin. And let it begin at home. Whatsoever that needs to be dismantled from the mind, let it be dismantled from the mind right away. Let's grow in passion. Let's grow in passion and in concern for one another's well being. Let the pastor grow in compassion and in concern for the well being of the flock. Begin to pray for some other person right now. Maybe a relative, maybe a child, maybe a husband, maybe a wife, maybe a brother, maybe a sister, maybe a congregation, maybe your children. Open your mouth right now and begin to pray. Telling the Lord from this day, I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want. To, I want to be cautious what I say. From this day, help me to be cautious how I react, how I act, how I think. Lord, I have to grow. I have to grow. I have to put on weight. Spiritual weight. I have to. The days are evil. So I need to grow. To be able to face the evil there. I need to grow in faith. And I need to grow in the knowledge of the Lord. And even in awareness. In humility, in expertise, in patience. I need to grow in patience. I need to grow in patience. 
Don't allow your mind to retain anything that is wrong. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do and let it fill your heart. There will be no space for any other thing. Let me tell you this. If you be quiet a little, I'll tell you this. One of the nasty things that people do that create great offense in the hands of uh, other people is calling them names. You call your child names. Or adopted child. You call her or him names. Listen to me. You don't call people names in the church. One of our one of our members long ago came to me and was offended with his pastor and told him our pastor is doing like Zebrudai. Jesus Christ. And he came demonstrating how the pastor is doing like the brutal. I was looking at him. I was asking, you are calling your pastor the brutal. You are not afraid. And you came to me to say that. If somebody calls his pastor the brutal, will you listen to what that person says? And there are people that are calling their children names and calling their wives names. Not good name. Calling their husbands names. You call a child name, the child gets red. Go to that your heaven alone. I don't want. Think of it. God bless you all.